we've had our say on what it was like watching him yesterday. Mm. What did you think? Since you were there? there was probably four or five moments in the game that just brought a smile to my face. Mm. You know, the goal. I'm supposed to be commentating on the goal <laughs> and the match. 3-0, uh, right? And I just put the microphone down, stood up and, and started applauding. And I don't know where that come from. <laughs> it was just, you don't often see that, especially when you're gnarly old people like us that have been but, in the game a amazing, million years. Which is amazing, because I did the exact same. It, I put my microphone down, yeah. stood up and applauded. It, you just had to. It was so good. It reminded me, I'm thinking, where have I seen that before? And I thought, well, Maradona back in 86 mm, when yep. he against England and whatever, but it just, it finished the game, it put Argentina in the final. For our listeners that might not have seen it, can you describe that moment for the third goal? Yeah, he received the ball probably right on the touchline. I'm thinking he's probably got about maybe a yard's grace from the touchline with Gradiol that has got a very good reputation as a young man at this tournament, right next to him, pinned him next to the touchline. And whenever I'm coaching any young kids, I say, use the touchline, it's your best friend, you know? So you limit the pitch down. You think he can't get out of there. Best he'll get a throw in. Mm -hmm. He manages to get out of there and beyond Gradiol. He chases him down the line. Gradiol gets back at him. He cuts back. He's strong. He's got good manoeuvrability. He's got everything. The, the, the stretch of play that he'd done had everything. It had vision to pick out the goal. Mm. It had strength to hold off a player who's six foot one and very strong. He, he stopped the player and then went again, which kills defenders, you know, to, to stand them up and then go again is, is the one thing that kills you. Low centre of gravity. He literally had everything in that. And when he got in, he just rolled the ball to his mate and said, put that in the net. I'm just going to chat with the fans for a minute. Went over behind the goal, put his arms up, took the adulation. Yeah. I don't think the kid had put it in the net at that stage, you know what I mean? It was you're incredible. Right, you're right. A 3-0 win. Um, a brilliant performance all round. They're into the final of, of the World Cup. And there is something that feels almost right about it, Ali? Well, as a lot of people said, it's written in the stars for that little fella, you know. Um, it's all very well saying that, but you've got to come and produce it. And that's the one thing he has done after a... Let's say it was a very well, it was a dodgy start, wasn't it? The worst possible start. Yeah, Saudi Scoring, Arabia. Yeah, and then getting beaten by, by Saudi Arabia. But they've definitely improved as the tournament's gone on. And I know they lost two late goals against the Netherlands. But there was something about last night, and I said... I thought the first 30 minutes was actually bang average, to, to tell the truth. I thought Croatia were really poor in forward areas. But I did reckon the first game would completely change the game. And it did. And it changed it for the benefit of everybody watching the game. Because as soon as the first goal went in, the little fella just came into a world of his own. And as Stuart says, was, he did four or five things that made people within that stadium just look at each other, actually, and applaud. It was brilliant to be there. Modric as well. We, we saw mm. him leave the pitch at the <coughs> final whistle looking incredibly dejected as you would and you, you feel that's his, his last World Cup really. How different might this Croatia team look in that next World Cup? Well listen, he is your true world class star mm. within the ranks of Croatia. Now they've got some, I always think whenever you play Croatia or, or look at Croatia, they've sort of, they deliver 7 out of 10. So every one of their players is adept on the ball. They know the game. They know the tricks of the game and they're very well drilled. And the level of consistency that they've showed over the last 6 or 8 years has been quite incredible. But make no mistake, Modric is the diamond. Yeah. He's the jewel in the crown, yeah. you know.